In today's video, I'm going to show you how to turn this into this into this with nothing but a laser and a 25 cent wood blank. So stick around and we'll get started. All right, so let's get started. Um, let me give you a little background uh, before we start in Lightburn um, and talk a little bit about QR codes for those people that aren't familiar with it. Um, a QR code uh, is basically, it's something you see every day. Uh, that's an example of one right there. And it's something that your telephone uh, or your QR reader, your it's something that the camera on your telephone can read. Uh, it's very similar to a barcode in that it stores information digitally uh, based on the layout of the dots. Um, but the QR code is slightly different because it lets your cell phone camera know how to read it. So when your camera sees it, it automatically links you to either a file or a program, website, something like that. In this case, uh, it opens your Wi-Fi settings on the phone and pre-fills in the login information for you to connect to a local um, Wi-Fi hotspot. So you're probably thinking, well, how's this going to make me money? Well, just about everywhere you go today, they have free Wi-Fi, right? So what business owner wouldn't fork over 20 bucks to have one or maybe a couple of these hanging around in their business? I'll give you an example. Just today, I went to the doctor and they have a ridiculously complicated username and password that was set up by their network guy. Now they're part of the local hospital, so their Wi-Fi comes through that network administrator. And of course, he wants, you know, the most security and the longest password. And I mean, it, it's got all kinds of special characters in it that people can't even find on their keypad in their phone. And it, it's just crazy because I don't think anyone really connects to it. So uh, not only that, but uh, one of the office people made this really ugly sign about free Wi-Fi, um, you know, listing the username and the password, and, and it just looks horrible. So I asked for the um, office manager, and she came out, and uh, I explained to her that, you know, it, it's be really hard to log into your Wi-Fi, and she said, yeah, I know, that we have no control over it. It's controlled by the hospital. So I took out my phone, and I showed her a picture of the one that I made for my house, um, you know, we have a lot of people coming and going on the weekends. Um, my son lives right next door. All of his friends are coming and going. Uh, my wife loves to cook. So, you know, uh, people are just coming in and out all the time. And they're always asking for our username and password. So I decided to make, so I said to the office manager, wouldn't it be easier if somebody could just point their phone, you know, and log right into your Wi-Fi without having to put any username, password, anything like that. And you, you're still going to be secure because, you know, I'm going to put in the secure password. And nobody's going to be able to see it. So she said, well, how much would that cost? And I said, well, uh, they're $20 a piece. So she said, oh, that's not too bad. Now, the doctor's office has three different waiting rooms. So uh, I said it would be $60 for me to do three of them for all three waiting rooms. And she said, yeah, that's fine. No problem. I can pay that out of petty cash. Needless to say, I was really happy you know, at that point, $59.25. I mean, it literally cost me 75 cents to make these. With that said, let's get started. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here again to the tools menu. The first thing we're gonna do is create the QR code. So we'll click on tools and we're gonna come down here to create QR code. Once we've done that, you click and drag anywhere on the screen and it'll pop up, it'll create the code and the raw content, Wi-Fi and contact tabs are here. We're gonna click on Wi-Fi and we're gonna put in a network SSID. I'm just gonna put in anything, anything for now for the network name and the password one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And most people are using uh, WPA for their home networks uh, WPA2. 
but you may need to change this to web uh, if for a business client or whatever so right now we're going to choose the WPA WPA2 and say OK and if we click up here in the left corner of the selector tool there is our actual barcode uh, excuse me QR code <laughs> now what we're going to do is we're going to create a tool path by coming back up to the rectangle tool and we're going to draw out a rectangle it doesn't matter what size it is and up here in the top left corner we're going to make sure that this lock is unlocked now we know that the wood blanks that I have are four inches so I'm going to click in here change that to four I have mine set to inches hit the tab button change it to four and hit enter now we can come back over here and lock it now we have a perfect four by four tool path so down in the bottom middle of the screen here you'll see the orange letter T1 we're gonna make that a tool path and the reason for that if we come over here to cuts and layers you'll see that the tool path will not burn there's no output okay it's just there to help us frame things so this is the area that we're gonna work in and again I'm gonna click and hold my center mouse wheel to move the screen around I'm gonna move this over here I'm gonna click on this one I'm gonna make it smaller drag down the corner I'm gonna bring this over to inside our, our tool path at this point we need a, a Wi-Fi logo so what we're gonna do is I actually have one in my uh, library in my arts arts library uh, let's see under household I have this one here and that's a trace but I'm gonna show you how to how to make it from scratch so we're gonna open up a window search for Wi-Fi logo in Google or whatever search engine you use click on images and we're gonna look for uh, a Wi-Fi logo and this is the one that I picked right here so I'm going to um, right click on this one I'm gonna copy the image and I'm gonna come back here right click on the work plane and I'm going to paste it and there we have it that's the logo now I'm gonna drag out the corner make it larger and then what I'm gonna do is come back up here to the tools menu and I'm gonna come down here to the trace image option and the reason that we're doing this is because we want a vector image um, you know we want the vector to be clear we want it to burn nicely and we don't want to use a, a regular image file we want to use a line cut on this so now if you look at the bottom here uh, in, in the uh, trace image window you'll see threshold and there's a scrubber here and if we use our uh, center mouse wheel and we scroll in we can see that this is traced fairly well but if we scrub back and forth you can see how it's going to change and right about there looks perfect to me so I think that's a good spot and um, you're not going to have this selected on yours so I'm going to deselect it on mine so I'm going to say okay but it looks like the image is still there okay but if we grab the center point right here we can drag that trace right off of it click on the image and hit our delete key and that image is gone now all we have left is this uh, vector image which will burn beautifully so uh, we're gonna bring this down select it bring it down to size now you, you'll see that if we did this um, with the image it would be distorted but if I scroll in here you'll see that that's a perfect image that we've got right there and that's exactly what we want okay so now I'm gonna click off of it and what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna grab the text tool over here the letter A click on that come down here and I'm just gonna type uh, Wi-Fi I'm gonna come back up to the top left hit the selector I'm gonna drag this over now you can put your network name here 
um, that's what I did I'm gonna resize it that way people know that you know it's it's your network they're connecting to and one thing here is that this tool is not gonna burn like I said earlier so that's just we're just using that so we know where to place all of these items inside of it so now if we click and drag across everything what I want to do come up here up to the top and you'll see there's a different centering positioning uh, icons up here we want to align these uh, along their vertical centers so we'll click that and you'll see that everything just fell into place there and it's perfectly centered on this tool path so uh, now what we can do is if we come over to cuts and layers over here on the right you'll see that we have this and we have this okay we do not want these two on the toolpath so we're gonna select them we're gonna come down here and we're gonna put them on the zero zero layer in the bottom left corner click on zero zero and I'm gonna select this one and also click on zero zero now you'll see that every, this is everything on zero zero that's what's gonna burn okay this will not when you right click on these it'll show you exactly what's selected in that particular uh, layer so this is the toolpath this is the cut layer or the burn layer I should say and this is basically it I mean you've got it now what we're gonna do is we're gonna preview this and this is exactly what's gonna burn and I'm just gonna scrub back in the timeline here and I can hit play and you'll see this is what the laser is gonna burn if you want to see the path of the laser you can show the traversial moves moves right here and then it'll show you that where the layers laser is moving with a red line okay so that all looks good so we're gonna say okay now as far as um, speed and power which is this one right here I have mine set to I double click it and it brings up the speed and power I have it set to 1100 speed 50% power now I'm using the Ortur laser master 2 20 watt which is technically is 5.5 watts of laser so uh, you're gonna have to do a little a few practice cuts I've already made a few of these I know what it is on my laser it's 1100 and 50% uh, power and one pass and it works perfectly so uh, if you have an Ortur or if you have a you know 5.5 watt laser you can probably get away with these settings but the chances are um, your laser is going to be different uh, even if you do have the same laser as me uh, you know my output might be different than yours you may have a brand new one where the diode uh, you know hasn't uh, degraded at all and you know mine is run quite a few cuts already and it's sort of degraded you may have to go 55 percent power um, you're just going to need to to burn one just for the heck of it and uh, test it and see how it works uh, what I usually do is you know I have one piece that I'll burn both sides and see which side comes out better making adjustments in the beginning this way I don't waste too much material but these are my settings and they work perfectly and that's about it you're ready to burn now I do have a way of setting up my uh, laser bed where I can just drop one of these discs these these wood discs right onto a pre-made uh, burned in image on the bed and I don't have to frame it or anything else but um, you know you're gonna have to do your framing if you don't have a template set up and uh, and then you just hit burn and you're good to go so I hope this uh, helped you out now look hey $19 and 75 cents so I've got right now I've got 18 of them that I have to make in the next couple days so you do the math and let me tell you it doesn't get any better than that I hope this helps you now go make some money